Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you a book haul for a combination of June and July. We're only really at the beginning of July but I don't think I'm going to be buying any more books this month, fingers crossed. Um, I say fingers crossed if I'm not in control of that. So I just wanted to cover some of the books that have been sort of joining my shelves. This isn't actually the sum total of everything I bought over the past kind of month and a half. A lot of them have already kind of made it onto um, my bookshelf but you guys have seen them in some form whether it be like they've been in a TBR or a wrap up or something. So today I'm going to be talking about the books that I've not really had a chance to um, particularly highlight on my uh, channel and just sort of talk about some of the, the things that I've got. I've grouped them actually into the bookstores that I got them from and I will be linking all four bookstores down below because they are all independent bookstores that you are able to buy stuff from even though you're not physically going to their store. They they all do sell their books online so they're really great for lockdown they're obviously in the UK because that's where I'm based but if you are looking for places to be able to get books but you're not comfortable going to a bookstore and you don't want to um, only go for big chains these are some great alternatives and they will now always be in my description box because I'm going to be trying to highlight some independent businesses that you can support. So the first one you can get them, um, you basically contact the guy Simon who runs it via Twitter. It's I believe called the Big Green Bookstore but in my head it's always just I'm gonna message Simon on Twitter so I'll link the Twitter account down below and I've got five books that have arrived and I have another three um, in the post but there are being some issues with uh, delivery and basically um, issues with the publishers at the moment so they should be coming through soon. So the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, Sword and Pen by Rachel Kane. This is book five and the final book in the Great Library series. This is a YA series which is a magical um, realism kind of a vibe. It's basically set in a world where the Library of Alexandra never actually burned down and instead became a powerhouse form of government and it basically uses um, almost like an iPad style technology but not quite to censor and control the books that people are allowed to have access to because you're never allowed to own a physical book. You can only have copies of them sent through to your devices. Obviously book five I'm not going to talk about what I'm expecting to happen in this one because it's the last of the series but it's a really really interesting fun cool series that looks like the importance of information and libraries and obviously is a no-brainer if you're a fan of books because they play such a core cool role in the storyline so super psyched for this one. The next one is another book five and final book in a series and that is Within the Sanctuary of Wings um, a memoir by Lady Trent by Marie Brennan. This is the final book in the Marie in the uh, Lady Brennan series. This is like a Victorian parallel universe where dragons exist and it follows our lady uh, naturalist or dragonologist who goes to um, study and explore them out in the natural world. This is the final book in the series like I was saying so again I'm not going to go into crazy amounts of detail about what is going to happen in this one in particular but I really really enjoy the series. I think they're such fun. I love the world building. I love the characters. I've enjoyed every single one of them so far and I really want to try and start finishing some of the series I have on the go so that's going to be a major your focus for my August reading is continuing or finishing with series that I have on the go. Branching out a little bit into some non-fiction I have Beatrix Potter A Life in Nature by Linda Lear. This as the title suggests is a biography of Beatrix Potter who was the writer who wrote the Peter Rabbit and Tales of Peter Rabbit series which is a beloved children's classic series. Beatrix Potter was also a really like keen um, naturalist exploration explorer of nature and I'm really excited to learn more about her. It's also one of the, the kind of Penguin Orange Spine classics that I really enjoy. I think that they're a great series that they have there. Um, so this one was recommended on Natalie's channel at A Curious Reader and I'm really really excited for it. Going down more of a paleontology uh, route we have Trilobite! But you have to say that excited because it has an exclamation point in the title by Richard Forty. So um, I've been branching out from dinosaurs within my paleontology reading. I've been kind of exploring some other things and trilobites are just really freaking cool. They were before the time of the dinosaurs in I believe the Cambrian period but please don't quote me on that my knowledge of um, the lower Paleozoic, Paleozoic um, era but yes my, my ability to put things in time is quite bad um, but yeah this looks really exciting and interesting there were so many different varieties of trilobites and they were mentioned on a David Attenborough um, documentary I watched back in May and I was just really intrigued so and knew that I definitely wanted to pick this one up very very cool very excited to get to it another book that I bought is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. This is the only classic I think on this list and it is another addition into my Penguin English Library paperbacks. I'm listening to this on audiobook. I've been listening to it for a while because as you can see this book is a bit of a chunker. That's the rough point that I am through if the audiobook was the physical book. Um, 
you, everybody knows on the channel that I'm collecting the Penguin English Library paperbacks. You can see my collection of red ones up here somewhere. So I was just ready for when I finished the audiobook to put this one onto the shelf. And I also thought it'd be nice to have a physical copy to maybe read some of the chapters to help speed it along a little bit because I am finding it rather slow and 38 hours worth of audiobook is actually quite a lot. So I think I'd appreciate being able to chip away a few with a quicker pace of physically reading it. The other books that I have coming from Simon are um, Rosewater Insurrection by Tade Thompson. This is book two in the Rosewater trilogy. I finished book one back in May? June? May? June? Who knows anymore? Um, I have no idea when I've read anything. And this is a really cool sci-fi speculative fiction that's set in Nigeria and an alien dome has basically um, landed in Nigeria and has created some sort of psychic connection going on. Um, book two looks really interesting. I enjoyed the way the book one ended and like I said I really want to continue with series and stop just reading the first book in a series and then not picking up the next one for months slash years on end uh, and with a similar kind of thing in mind I also have the next two books uh, or the final two books in the N.K. Jemison's Broken Earth trilogy. I read the fifth season recently it was in my latest wrap up I absolutely adored it and I definitely need to highly prioritise this one I think I'm going to binge read them once they arrive so it's the Ob Obelisk Gate and the stone something I'm sorry the covers will be here um you know I'm really bad at remembering those kind of things so yeah so I'm really excited about when they arrive so I can finish them off now we start to get slightly further back in June so I might slightly start to lose track as to who I bought what books from where um but that's okay so let's let's see if we can kind of group these a little bit more so I placed an order with Category Is Books which is a wonderful queer bookstore that is up in Glasgow it's run by Fee and Charlotte and uh they are absolutely amazing you've seen some of the books already because they've made their way onto wrap-ups or TBRs already but one I haven't really talked about too much is Gentleman Jack, uh, a biography of Anne Lister by Angela Stiegler. This is actually a translated um, non-fiction which is really exciting, I've been reading far more of them and this as again the title suggests is a biography of Anne Lister and it also contains quite a few of her diaries and letters I believe. Anne Lister was a character from the uh, Victorian era or a person from the Victorian era and um, she was an unabashed lover of other women and her journals really shocked and stunned the world when they came to light. Uh, she's had a TV series made about her which I haven't seen but because I of course I haven't I don't watch anything um, but I've heard very good things about and I really would like to learn more about her as a person. Um, I also just wanted to say that Fee and Charlotte are doing a wicked thing at the moment with me where basically um, I'm giving them a lump sum of money that they're then going to use to do almost like a bespoke um, subscription box kind of an idea where um, I've sent them my Goodreads and a list of some of the um, kind of genres that I do and don't like and they're going to pick a book for me every month and send it through um, and just kind of work their way through the chunk of money I've given so if you'd be interested in doing that and again it's only in the UK but if you're in the UK and you think that, that sounds really cool to get your hands on more queer literature then like I said everything's going to be linked down below feel free to reach out to them I think it's going to be really exciting so obviously you'll see more of their books uh, on my book hauls in the future but I think it's going to be so much fun and I love having that kind of like surprise not knowing what's coming in the post kind of vibe so I think it's going to be great another bookstore that I placed a semi-large order through is uh, This Is Love. This is a black owned bookstore that I believe is based in London but don't quote me on that and I know that the owner also does a lot of work with local schools. She's doing a really cool thing at the moment where she's got like a GoFundMe for um, multicultural children's books to try and increase the amount of them in um, uh, in schools so please do go check that out again everything linked down below I bought a couple of books but some of them have already made it onto my July TBR so the only one that you haven't seen is uh, Black Tudors The Untold Story by uh, Miranda Kaufman this as the title suggests is about Black Tudors black people in Tudor times. It seems to make sense. Um, this is actually uh, was either won or shortlisted for the Wolfson History Prize which is really exciting. Um, the Wolfson History Prize is um, fairly noteworthy and has some really really cool books on it so it's a great place to look if you're looking for some well regarded history books. I believe The Five by Hallie Rubenhold would see the nominated or won one of the years so um, I have had some experience with other nominees from it. This is also really perfectly timed as well because I've been really interested in learning more about the Tudors and that time period but branching off of stuff that we talked about in school because I watched the musical Six just before lockdown it was my last thing that I went to see in the theatre and absolutely loved it that's about King Henry VIII's wives and giving them back a voice so I think this will tie in really nicely with the idea of looking at people who haven't had voices in history and I think this is going to be so so interesting. Now the final books that I'm going to be talking to you about are from Toppy & Co which a lot of people already know about my channel it's a lovely independent bookstore that has a couple of different sites but the one closest to me is the Ely branch. I've 
been using their online store loads in lockdown i absolutely love the people there i think they're fantastic so these are some of the books that i bought from that so the first one you will have seen in one of the other tbrs but that's we were eight years in power by tana hussey coates this is a non-fiction politics book that is looking at barack obama's um i nearly said reign then but that's not the word that you use for presidents or prime ministers um time as president of the us and a just sort of general discussion of the progress and setbacks made in that kind of a time period i think it's going to be really 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 interesting and tana Hasi coates is a big name author that i have not yet read from so i am intrigued and assuming that i like his writing style obviously huge back catalogue of both fiction and non-fiction will become open so i think that'll be really good the next book I have is by Essie Adijan and this is Half Blood Blues. Uh, this author wrote Washington Black which is kind of the one that she's most well known for uh, but this is one of her earlier novels and it is um, in uh, set in Paris in the 1940s and it is about a black man who uh, gets arrested. He's uh, like a jazz artist and uh, 50 years later um, there's like a storyline about it. It's kind of a dual timeline thing. Sorry, I had to read off the back to check the, the time frames there. But it, we're looking at sort of a historical fiction set in Paris in the 40s and then you've got your modern day kind of exploring what happened. I generally enjoy this as a format in historical fiction and I really enjoy um, this will naturally 40s um, Paris. It will be discussing the Second World War and I do enjoy Second World War literature as well. So I think this will be really interesting. The introduction as well of jazz into this, I think it's gonna be really good fun. I really enjoy reading books that are set in the arts in some way shape or form and this just generally appealed a lot more than Washington Black which is the particularly big one from this author. So I think this is going to be intriguing and exciting and I am psyched to get to it because of course I am because I'm excited for all of these books because that's what we say in book hauls. The next one I have to talk about is in fact actually all the next three are uh, non-fiction just to let you know but look it's here. Um, that cover is really jazzy and I hadn't really quite noticed until seeing it on screen. Anyway this is Rebecca Slot's Scott's The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Uh, Henrietta Lacks, um, her cancer cells were taken without her knowledge and then used and basically became the foundation of cancer research. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is a really like iconic um, popular science book. It was hugely, hugely popular, came out at least a decade ago now, um, but it's supposed to be really amazing. And I think it won the Goodreads prize uh, the year that it came out. So I'm quite intrigued by it. Uh, this cover I think is the best of all the covers I've seen so far. I think it's fantastic. So this will be a really interesting look at both the history of um, cancer research, but also discuss around agency and people's bodies being um, used without their consent so definitely um, an interesting one to read. Sticking on a similar-ish sciencey theme we also have Patricia Farah's A Lab of One's Own. This is Science and Suffrage in the First World War and this is looking at um, the way that the First World War and the pressures that it put on the societies of like the various countries who were involved in it led to gains in rights for various marginalised groups. Um, obviously it's specifically looking at suffrage which is um, focused on women but I'm hoping that it will touch on some other things. This I think is going to be really really interesting because at the moment I'm reading Hidden Figures which is about um, the uh, black women who were involved in um, helping to get America into space but the first half of that book really is a conversation about um, the way that World War II opened the doors to more both women and black people um, for different jobs and basically being able to make kind of strides and I'm really fascinated by the kind of the the knock-on effect that war and conflict has um, to that kind of high level when it's like a world war for social issues um, going on within that kind of society I think it's like a for me personally a more interesting conversation around the role of war almost so I'm really really intrigued by this one I think it's going to be um, fascinating and um, yeah generally generally a good read. Uh, you have seen this one it was in my um, media freak out tag but this is Wayward Lives and Beautiful Experiments um, by Sadia Hartman. This is about the queer black women who found a home at the turn of the century within New York and the kind of it's sort of a social history of the communities and connections that they made. I think it's going to be so cool but I've said that about all these books you know. I'm really picking up a lot of history non-fiction at the moment but not just history talking about like either kings and like royalty or sort of 
big name figures or indeed like military instead looking at more social history and sort of um, implications there so I think it's gonna be really 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 fascinating so those are all the physical books um, I do have either it's either out already or will be coming out next um, basically a look at what is on my Kindle because I've also been buying a lot of books on my Kindle a lot of contemporary romance but a lot of other things as well um, so I'm gonna be doing a full-blown tour of my Kindle TBR of all the books that I've not yet read that are on there so do look out for that one or indeed go check if it's already out I don't know my own posting schedule that's fine um so yeah so that's pretty much it from me uh what do you think to all these books where do you think I should start do you think I have, there's anything that should be a nice high priority um and like I said all of the links to all the various uh bookstores will be down below please think about if you are going to be buying books um where you're getting them from and supporting independent businesses is always amazing rather than big name corporations and they will be in my description boxes going forward so yeah that's let's wrap this bad boy up <laughs> have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon bye